Welcome family change agents and people of God. Happy Monday, happy Monday. I'm glad to have you guys here on my video today and for the people that are returning, I wanna say thank you for stopping in to spend a little time with me. For the newcomers, I wanna give you a big welcome as well. I'm Tan Rich and I'm here to empower and encourage you and to help you to find your way to elevation by some of the content that I will share with you. And so with that having been said, as you're coming in, if you could like the video, share the video and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. So let's get started today with today's video. The title of today's video is Down But Not Out. And this video is being shared with you for those people that feel like they're in some sort of a wilderness okay or that they've been abandoned or betrayed maybe you're just feeling stuck maybe you feel like you're tolerated and not celebrated or that you are in a relationship or have friendships that are non-reciprocal this this could be friendships like i said this could be a relationship this could be boyfriend girlfriend it could be a marriage it could be any other type of union or maybe you're just emotionally sad and so if you fall into any of these categories, then this video is certainly for you. So we want to talk a little bit about wilderness. And I want to share with you the biblical perspective on wilderness. And that would be a place of discomfort and substantial loss or possibly captivity. And the characters in the Bible that are most associated with being in a wilderness are Moses and the Israelites that were in the wilderness for 40 years in captivity. And so if this is something that you feel you might be going through in your life right now, that you're in a wilderness, that things are just not working as planned, that things are, uh, you know, once you surpass one problem, here comes another problem. And so we wanna take a look at some strategies and some things that we can do while we're in the wilderness to make things a little easier on ourselves, keeping in mind that this too shall pass and we will be coming out of this wilderness. We will not stay in this permanently, but that this is a temporary situation. And with that in mind, I want to um, tell you that it's time for us to just breathe, change our focus, take a stand, because it is time to revamp. And the word revamp means to give new and improved form structure or appearance to and an example of something that we could revamp would be our image and we can also revamp our standards so with that having been said i want to give you three key points with several examples of how you may begin to revamp and how you may begin to set in place standards that are going to improve your interactions and improve your environment as you make your moves. And so the first point that I want to touch on is showcase the king or the queen that you are. People need to see who you feel you are. People need to see who you think you are, how you carry yourself and what you expect. So you want to showcase yourself as a queen or showcase yourself as a king. And there are some examples of how we can do that. We can certainly dress to impress. You might want to change your hair. You can get busy and stay busy. You can get out more. Go to a gym, get a membership at a gym so that you can exercise and it can boost your framework for positivity. It can make you feel more energetic. It can make you feel more happy and more adventurous, okay? When getting out more, you can take yourself to a coffee shop. You can go to the show, okay? You can buy yourself flowers. You can even date yourself. You don't need a significant other to go out to a restaurant of your choice that you really enjoy and to sit down and have a great meal. You can pull your credit card out or you can pull your cash out and you can take care of that meal and you can enjoy the fact that you enjoyed your company and that you didn't put your life on hold because you don't have a significant other or because you feel a little down and out that you are in some type of a wilderness. And so the second point I wanna to touch on, and that is about the standards or the boundaries, okay? And so you want to set boundaries for all of your encounters. 
You want to have an image where people can look at you and tell what you're going to tolerate and what you're not going to tolerate, what you're going to accept and what you're not going to accept. And so the first thing that I would suggest as far as setting boundaries or putting uh, standards in place is to rid specific people from your phone contacts. There are certain people that you don't need to hear from. There are certain people that you've ended relationships from that um, you know are not significant in your life or in your space anymore. And so you need to rid specific people from your phone contacts. You need to guard your ear gates and let it be known that you will be respected and that you will be talked to admirably. And admirably means that these people will show an admiration through their conversation and their interactions with you for you as a person. They will show appreciation for you just as you are. You will not have to change for these people. You will not have to jump through hoops for these people. You will not have to walk on eggshells for these people, but these people will speak to you and they will treat you with admiration for who you are. Don't entertain gossip about yourself or others. The Bible even tells us that God hates a gossiper. My mother used to tell us when she was raising her three girls that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And for the people that are gossiping, that's conversation that they really need to take to the person that they're gossiping about. You don't need to sit and entertain gossip. Revamp your inner circle. We talked in one of the previous videos about having an inner circle of like-minded people that you make your moves with. And so you might have to take a look at your circle again and add some people to your circle and remove some people uh, from your circle, okay? You are the best person who can decide on who deserves to be in your circle. Entertain positive and high vibrational energy. Remove low energy from your life and entertain people that have high energy and high expectations. And expect no one to validate you. You don't need anyone's approval. If you feel comfortable and spirit-led with the choices that you're making, then that is your green light. That is your green light to go and to move forward with whatever your plans are. You can affirm your own greatness. You can speak those positive affirmations over yourself and remind yourself that you are great, you are capable, okay? You can, you can do things that you put your mind to and you are unapologetically you. So you don't need validation from others. You can validate yourself. You know your worth. Do not tolerate people to give you less than you desire or deserve, okay? And an example of that would be, what time do you get your phone calls? Those people that you may have an interest in, do they call you during the daytime? Do they call and say, hey, meet me for lunch? Or hey, let's have breakfast? Or what were you doing? You know, can you come out? You know, I wanna take you to the show. Or does your phone ring after midnight? Does your phone ring specifically in the wee wee hours of the morning? Are you getting calls where people wanna know, can they come through at two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning? If that's the case, you need to set some boundaries because queens think like, if you can't contact me during the day, if we can't do something during daylight hours, then why are you calling me in the wee wee hours of the morning? That speaks for itself. The third key point is to take the high road in all that you do. And I first heard about the high road when I heard a quote from uh, Michelle Obama saying that when others go low, she goes high and she stays on the high road. So in doing that, you wanna be mindful of the time that you spent because time that you spend affects your outcomes and your outcomes should be linked to the vision that you are actively pursuing. Align all your actions with your vision. When you have a choice in how you're going to spend some extra time that you might find that you have, see if you can come up with something that is going to contribute toward your vision. Be productive. Be productive. Don't waste a lot of time, you know. Get up off that couch and, and make a move, okay? Do some things that you'll be able to cross off your to-do list. Head toward pursuing your dreams and your vision. Smile and go after those dreams. Find a like-minded group of friends. Talk less and listen more. I can't stress this one enough. 
Oftentimes we get so excited about the endeavors that we're considering and we want to share our good news with everyone and we want to share with people, you know, what we're attempting to do and what we have plans to do. But sometimes it's best for you to share when your dream or your plans have manifested. Oftentimes people will hold those conversations with us, but they may not celebrate our decisions. They may not be rooting for us as we think they're rooting for us. And some people just like to have those conversations with us because they're just a little bit nosy and they wanna know, hey, what does she have going on? Hey, what does he have going on? What's their next move? So I would advise you to keep some things to yourself and when you have those things that have manifested in your life that you can be proud of, that you have attained, then you can share those things with others once they cannot impact or have a hand in possibly changing or altering something that ties in with what you're attempting to do. Serve others. Is there someone that you can bless? Is there someone that you can call? Is there someone that you can help? These are things that are fulfilling and these are things that we're expected to do as well. See if there's someone that you can bless. I know that you're in a wilderness. I know that sometimes, you know, you're not in your best of best moods, but you can always bless someone else because even though you are going through trials and tribulations, there's always somebody, people of God, that is suffering worse than we are. And so if we can be somewhat of a shining light and bless someone else's day or impact someone else's day in a positive way, that's always something that we should strive to do. It will make you feel better and it certainly will bless the person that you're thinking of and that you are attempting to help or assist. And so the last thing I want to say about these uh, examples is to keep God first and know that you're going to come out of this wilderness. Know that you're going to come out like the shining star that you are. And also know that the joy that you have, the world didn't give it to you and the world cannot take it away from you. Our joy comes from the Lord. And while we walk with the Lord, we can know that yes, we're in a wilderness, yes, we're not in our happiest state of mind right now, but the Bible tells us that this too shall pass, and as we're obedient and we keep God first in our life, we can only go up, we can only go up, okay? We have no restrictions that God doesn't know about and that God is not intending to change during divine timing. So when it's his divine timing, he is going to bring you out of the wilderness. He's going to bring me out of the wilderness. And my wilderness may not have the same time stamp that your wilderness has. You may be in your wilderness for a specific amount of time, and I may have a different time stamp on my wilderness. Think about Moses and the Israelites. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. So let's just pray <laughs> that God is not going to leave each of us in a wilderness for 40 years, but the amount of time that we are in our wilderness, let's make the most of it. Let's be positive and let's be proactive in the things that we do to go through that wilderness in the best way possible. And so with that having been said, I want to say, be loving, be kind, be aware and be blessed until I see you in the next video. If you have not liked or subscribed to my video, I ask that you do that before you jump off. Have a blessed day, people, and thank you.